George here, and we are back again working with our 3D procedural textures. In the last video, we ended off with kind of a problem where as we move this texture around, or that is we move this geometry around, we are sampling different parts. Um, but what we'd really like to do is to be able to see these spheres by themselves without having to do all this nonsense. And the first thing we're going to do is actually create a transparent shader that will kind of let us start to do that, but what we'll end up finding out by the end of this video is we still have some problems, but this is get it going to get us in the right direction. So starting off, we're going to need to open up our texture 3D shader, so go ahead and do that. And now we need to make this thing work with transparencies. Now, I'm going to end up using a slider to make this actually work because I want to use the RGB value, the black and white value, to determine what should and shouldn't be transparent. So let's create a new property. I'm going to call this underscore alpha range. And let's just call this uh, alpha range. And this is just going to be a float value. Actually, let's make this a range value, and that's going to be between 0 and 1 and it's going to start at zero. Next up, we need to change our tags here because we're set to opaque. We need our render type to be transparent. And we also need our queue to be transparent so it gets rendered at the right time. Now our LODs fine, pass, CG program, that's all good. Uh, what we do need to do, though, is handle the fact that uh, we need our culling off. That is, we want to render the back sides of things if necessary. It's not necessary just yet, but in the future when we deal with things like transparency, sometimes if you want to, if you want to see the opposite side of something, well, you're going to need to actually render both sides. So let's go ahead and turn that on already. So we'll do cull off. And the last thing we're going to do is we want blending to be enabled, so we'll do blend. We're going to do type source alpha and then one minus source alpha. And this is, of course, just how we handle the source and the destination and how they're transferred from one to the other. Now that we have that, we need to declare our uh, variable down here. So float underscore alpha range. Perfect. And we don't need to change our vert input or our vert output. We just need to come down into our fragment shader to make things actually work. So down here in the fragment shader, we need to do a quick test. So if our main color dot red or green or whatever you want is less than our alpha range value, then we're going to set our main color dot alpha equal to 0.0. .0. So it's basically cutting off everything below that range. Now we could also do uh, several different things. We could have made the value itself uh, equal to, that is the, the black or white value, equal to how opaque it ends up being. But uh, this al allows us to kind of uh, cut things off at various ranges to kind of see some interesting effects. Anyway, let's go ahead and save that, come back into Unity really quick, and see what errors we have. So it looks like I have a missing comma somewhere. So let's come back up here. And let's see, that's right here. Put a period instead of a comma. So going back over here, now that we have that all working, great. So we're going to click on our object, scroll on down, let's find our shader, and start doing some transparencies. And look at that. So you can see what's happening here is because, well, at first when it's all black and this value is zero, it's fine, but then we can slowly, because we have a gradient going from white to black here, we can actually start to slowly erode away each of those spheres which is kind of nice. Somewhere around there is pretty nice in terms of a transition. But we've got a problem here. Um, well, where are spheres? And you got to think about this problem here. We might have a volume texture. We might, might be trying to view it, but we have nothing sampling that volume. Remember, our objects are polygons, and the polygons are only on the outside. There's nothing internal to, to create structure. And uh, it's up to us to actually come up with a way of solving this. And there are, are several different methods to make this work. And we're going to try to look at all of them in this series. But the easiest one, the most simple one to work with, has to do with axis aligned uh, planes, basically. That is creating a series of planes aligned with the X, Y, or Z axis and putting so many in there and sampling so many times that it ends up looking like you have a volume. And that actually is going to be our following video that we take a look at next. I know this video was incredibly short, but that those were the few changes we needed in our shader to make transparencies now start to happen. 
In our next video, we're going to work with axis aligned planes, and we're going to make this something where you can actually see all these different structures inside of the volume. So I'll catch you next time. So long, everyone, and goodbye.